Okay, we're going to the ball screen. We're going to see in July for a week. Mm -hmm. My cousin has a cabin. It's like right on the side of a mountain. Oh, nice. yeah. 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 It's kind of commercialized. Yeah. Not really yeah. for that, but nice. It's a nice area. There's a lot of people from Harpen. There's a few of the Tennessee people that have cabins, and then from like Maggieville, North Carolina. Or Maggieville. Right, yeah. 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 They have a lot of people there. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And people, you know, I mean, you do something for so long and you get the heat in the ocean and people want the mountains. You know? That's me. That's the beach. I was raised right here. It ain't nothing special. Like, ain't nothing. Really, my idea was eventually when I retire and you're 80, you're comfortable one day. You can wake up some, you know, yeah. June, July, the day parts come together. All those. Yeah. <laughs> no. We should have lined that number. Yeah, we will know. Yeah, we need to tell me. That stuff had to be really stay focused to get through. <laughs> I'll come back. Yeah. He's, he's not on the committee. He's on the committee. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's underneath that one. Yeah. 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 All the way in the back? Yeah. I missed that one. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. Do the prayer? Not yet. Yeah. The prayer or <laughs> Pokey roll. I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on Tuesday, June 20th, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Lahuzis? Here. Vice Mayor Banther? Here. Commissioner Sievers, absent and excused? Commissioner Kikta? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our commission meeting. Tonight's invocation will be given by uh, Reverend Jason Clemens. Please. <laughs> yes, right there. If you please stand and remain standing for the uh, Pledge of Religion. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you for this time to gather. Lord, I thank you for all the officials and the commissioners and the mayor's office. Lord, your, your protective hand upon Tarpon Springs. And we just thank you for this city, Lord. We thank you and we lift up our officials to you. We pray for wisdom. For them, Lord, a, a blessing on, on their families and all that they're doing, all the law enforcement and fire, firemen and uh, first responders. Lord, we just, we're just so thankful for this city. So, Lord, we just place this city into your hand, this meeting time, and we just ask that uh, there would be uh, even divine creative ideas to the problems and all the, the issues that arise with these leaders, Lord, that they would have the wisdom that comes from above. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for this meeting. Thank you for every person here. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Reverend Jason, thank you very much. Mr. LeCourse is on vacation tonight. Mr. Kutchin is going to be the uh, acting uh, city manager. Thank you for doing that. Well, thank you, Mayor. And uh, also, uh, the city attorney is not going to be here tonight. So uh, Mrs. Uh, Ajella is going to be here with us. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Well, thank you. We are now going to the public comments of the items that will not be discussed tonight. If you have any comments, please come forward. Here, none. Yes, oh, here's one. one. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Wanda Kimsey. I live at 894 Royal Burkdale Drive in Tarpon Springs. I'm a student in the Public Policy and Administration Program at St. Petersburg College. The reason I'm here tonight is my capstone project that I'm currently working on relates to the City of Tarpon Springs Emergency Management Plan. Governmental agencies have employees working in certain positions where it is mandatory for employees to report to work during a state of emergency or disaster situation. My mission statement is to promote the City of Tarpon Springs Emergency Management Plan as a model that promotes, excuse me, that provides a designated shelter space solely for the families and pets of city government employees who are required to work during emergency and disaster events. The City of Tarpon Springs is one of the unique governmental agencies who has incorporated this policy into their personnel manual. As part of my public relations plan, I will be submitting an article to the Florida City and County Management Association promoting the City of Tarpon Springs emergency plan as a model. The article will be published in the July 31st, 2017 News for City and County Managers newsletter. Additionally, my capstone project will be listed on the Florida City and County Management Association website in their research paper section for other cities and counties to review. I would like to thank Mr. LaCouris, who has been extremely supportive in my quest for information regarding my capstone project. I also would like to thank Deputy Chief Young, Duffy Smith, and Ms. Niffen for their assistance. I'd like to say kudos to the city for having the foresight to implement these policies. My capstone presentation before the panel of judges is on July 10th. Once everything has been provide, excuse me, approved, I will provide a copy of my capstone to Mr. LaCouris. Again, thank you for your dedication and your commitment to providing excellent services to the city and our community. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> Mr. Delacus? All right, Peter Delax, 514 Ashland Avenue. First off, I would like to greatly thank Mr. Paul Smith, Mayor Alahousas, and uh, for attending the climate change, weather change seminar that Mr. Gowen put together with the uh, church on the bayou last Saturday. So thank you for your attendance, and hopefully when we have these, we can get more information out as to uh, getting people involved. And as the mayor and as Paul and maybe some of you are quite aware of, uh, Tarpon Springs is on the front line of rising seas. Um, secondly, I wanted to talk about, uh, and I know we'll talk about the penny distribution later, but uh, the Friends of the Anklote forwarded to the board uh, last Friday a, uh, a listing of all the uh, approved projects that the Florida Communities Trust approved for funding for 2017. And guess what? Again, Tarpon Springs isn't on that list. Why not? Because this board has not, and previous boards have not taken the action to apply for this. Now, just for those who aren't aware of it, the Florida Communities Trust is a grant program through the state where we only have to pay 25% of the funding to purchase property 
and they provide 75%. Now, just a little overview. Uh, Upper Santa Fe River Corridor, Alachua Conservation Trust, got a million dollars. Cypress Creek Preserve out of St. Luce County got 1.6. Ocean Hammock Park Phase 2 out of St. Augustine Beach got 1.5. Even a little village of Key Biscayne for their Hampton Lane project got over $800,000. Projects approved subject to funding. There's two here for Ludlam Trail for the city of Miami and Miami-Dade County for over $5 million. The Waukesha Basin Preservation Project, Levy County, $1.5. Hammock Park Expansion, the city of Dunedin, $682,000. We would like our share of this money. It's available. We just need to start the process. And even if we don't get it, like ineligible, the city of Newport Ritchie asked for 1.6. At least we'll get, if you're familiar with it, we'll be able to get our projects ranked. So we get our points. And then we know where we're deficient in and where we need to get more points to get the eligibility. And some of you know what I'm talking about. And what I'm really talking about is the Walmart property. Because right now, I believe we could get that for $6 million. 1.5 would be ours. We'd get $4.5 million. There's plenty of people here that got $1.5 million or more. Why can't we? And I'm telling you now, like I told you before, when the appraisal comes in for those two little properties across from Craig Park, it's probably going to be close to $2 million or more. So you look at 74 acres that you can create a recreation as I've spoken to you all again about other ideas we have about how to utilize that for the community, how we can make money from mitigation by selling mitigation credits, get rid of all the, uh, all the uh, Brazilian peppers in there in exchange for mitigation credits where we get money. Do we know of any other properties in the city that make money off of themselves or have that potential? other than us providing additional services on it. So as we get close to the penny discussions later, please consider what we've been talking about for years. And some of you have supported in your campaigns. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Hear none. We are now going to the presentation, which is item number one, Anklo River Dredge Project Update. Well, my uh, fellow commissioners, I want to update you and the public on the latest information regarding the uh, Anklo River Dredge Project. As we all know, on June 2nd, it was Friday, we learned that the, uh, Governor Scott vetoed the, uh, vetoed the funding for our project from the state 2018 budget. Monday, June 5th, we sent a letter to Governor Scott asking him for his consideration to restore funding. We also included a resolution which was scheduled to be approved on June 6th, BOC meeting, which was the next day. Commissioner Sieber requested that this item to be placed on the agenda to be discussed, and we had a, a very, very healthy discussion. Also on June 5th, I called Governor Scott and I spoke with him. I spoke with his personal assistant, her name is Mrs. Samuel, and I expressed my disappointment in the project's veto and I explained to her the importance of the Anklo River that our local economy is dependent on and the channel is very unsafe for the large vessels to navigate. She stated to me that the governor has no mechanism to override his veto. So we had to look for another we had to look for another avenue to get the revenue. She said that funding might be available through the economic development program which will be established. Based on that information, I discussed our options with Mr. Lecouris. Mr. Lecouris worked with uh, Ms. Lemons and Mr. Robinson. They prepared a package which was sent to Mr. to uh, Governor Scott to Sandra Ladvala, Representative Chris Sproles, us to the BOC, and to the Marine Commerce Committee. On June 16, Mr. Lecouris and I contacted the uh, governor's office and we spoke to uh, Ms. 
C.C. Proctor. She is the service executive director of economic opportunities to ensure that they receive the package for the governor's review. And also we wanted to know who is the contact person, who is the person that we're going to be dealing with so we have a direct communication. Well, yesterday at 11 a.m., we had a conference call with Mrs. Uh, Proctor from Tallahassee representing Governor Scott. In attendance in Tarver Springs was Bob Robinson and Ms. Lemons and myself. We discussed the project in detail. And yesterday late afternoon, I received another call from Mr. Jim Popel. She, he, is, he reports to Mr. Proctor. Also, uh, the acting manager, uh, Cochin, was there as well. And um, he wanted to let us know that no one has been assigned yet to the economic development program, and he's going to let us know when that happens. So up to this point, we know that it's going to be an economic development program, and funding it will be available, but no one is in charge of the program yet. Also, Mr. LeCourris, with Karen Lemons and Bob Robinson, are preparing additional packages to be hand-delivered to the elected officials of the federal level. We'll include the uh, US United States Senators, Bill Nelson and Marco Rubio. Also, the United States representatives of the area, including Gus Pilirakis, Daniel Webster, Charlie Crist, Kathy Kester, Kester and uh, Dennis Ross. And I will be hand deliver those packages to them and I explain to them the importance of this project because we're gonna need their help to, to get the funding to be transferred to, our, to the Army Corps of Engineering, Engineers for the tragedy to take place. So this is the latest information that we have regarding our project. Um, it's very frustrating, but we're working with it. We're going to continue working with that to make sure it gets done. I'd like to take this opportunity to help and to thank Mr. Lequeurs, Ms. Lemons, and um, Mr. Robinson. They worked so hard preparing all those packages and being part of the phone calls that we make to uh, Tallahassee and let them know the, um, how important this project is to us. Uh, before I turn it over to, uh, before I ask for public comments, I'd like to uh, ask the uh, Vice Mayor Panther for your comments. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I was absent, obviously, from, from the last meeting, and I appreciate um, the extra time that staff has put in over the last two weeks. Obviously, I spent several hours on the, on the, on the phone with uh, Sprawls and um, uh, Mark McCurris and Karen Lemons, and I appreciate uh, Commissioner Seaver putting this on the agenda two weeks ago for for a uh, for a discussion, and then I appreciate the mayor all that you've done um, in, in, in talking with the uh, with with the with, with the with the with the governor's office and following up with him. I think, as I said in in my memo, that we learned a valuable lesson in that you know we can't. Um, just trust that our, our our representatives, no matter who they are, and we have great ones, um, that uh, they're, they're going to get this done for us. And I think we learned that we have to do exactly what we're doing now. Uh, like Mayor, how you're communicating with the with with the with the governor's office frequently. I think it's going to take trips to uh, Tallahassee, which have been done before in in prior boards. Um, you know, we'll have to learn how 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 we can do that appropriately, obviously. Um, but I, I think us staying in front of them because there's so many projects. We can mail them all the resolutions that we want and the studies, and uh, that's good. But there's you know there's probably thousands of people right behind us doing the, those 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 same things. So I think the most that we keep in front of them, uh, physically, you know, and also verbally on the phone helps. And as well, I, I still encourage the public to keep contacting uh, uh, Chris uh, Chris Chris Sprawl's office. And, and uh, Jack's office as well to encourage them to fight for it. Um, I, I, I do have kind of um, uh, 
lesson hopes uh, that that will get funding from from the state for this project. But I appreciate you know any efforts that that are made to get us funding. Uh, perhaps this new opportunity could provide us that that funding. I think the only way that's going to happen is if we physically stand, just 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 stance uh, stance uh, stay in front of them constantly. We can't rest that you know our representatives or whatever are are um, working for us 100 percent because as we saw and correct me if 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 I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm, if I'm, if I'm wrong, Mayor, but the governor's office said originally that they had never even seen our our, our uh, impact study. Correct. Yeah, at the very beginning. Yeah, and we, I mean, how, how many times did we send that to Tallahassee or give it to our, 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 our representatives? So I think that shows that we have to, obviously we have, we, have, we have to send things, but just to stay on top of it and just, and just, 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 just stay in front of it. I'm glad that the project still can continue to carry on. Um, but, uh, you know, I would just, you know, next year is an election year, obviously, and maybe we'll get some more attention then. But I think it just needs to be uh, well known that 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 um, people that represent us in Tallahassee need to perform um, and uh, need to be able to assist us with this dredging on on, on all levels. Uh, I have reached out to Nelson's mm -hmm. office because I've I've just been in touch with them since the beginning on this through um, I think it's Shara Anderson is our uh, is our rep with them, and um, I'm going to be having a call with one of their. Uh, Staffers in D.C. That's I guess assist the the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, uh, senator most with these with, with these projects. So when I have an update for that, I'll do a memo obviously. But um, I appreciate y'all's efforts, and I and I really do appreciate you, Mayor, the way you're continuing to stay on top of the governor and be proactive about it, and the rest of this the, this board as well. I know everyone's made their own individual efforts in contacting people, but I would just urge the public that. We have to stay on top of this, that your role is just as important as ours in this, and you have to keep in contact with all the representatives, because if we don't put the pressure on them, it's just not going to happen. So that's pretty much it. And again, I, 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 I appreciate you all carrying the water in the, in, in the last meeting and uh, do, doing that, that uh, resolution and, uh, and uh, go in talking about it. Uh, Vice Mayor Panther, just to let you know that uh, after that, I, I talked to, the, uh, to that uh, director up there. Yeah. Uh, I asked her that um, uh, if I can, if I can get an appointment to the uh, the governor, mm -hmm. and she was saying that it would be more wise to wait to see who's actually going to be the manager of the uh, economic development program, and then that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Well, I would encourage you as much as you feel yeah. comfortable to keep on asking for one. I think you're fully entitled to, yeah. and and I think you you know should. So as much as you feel comfortable and want to, I would support you. Uh, you know, I don't have a problem talking to him or going up there and see me first. Good, good, good. Thank um, you, Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Kick. Um, I just, just echo what um, Vice Mayor said here. We need to be persistent and just keep on doing what we're doing and fight the fight. This is a very important project to our community. Um, and again, it's, sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. So maybe if we can send either the mayor up there uh, or our city manager, Karen Lemons, rotate, send us different people in there, but um, be persistent. Go up once a month if we have to. Um, I, I don't know if that's, I think that would be sufficient enough, but yeah, like I said, out of sight, out of mind, and just show them how much we need this project. Um, but thank you for, for fighting for us, and um, you know, yeah. I'm not sure if, if we would qualify for that economic development well they uh we sent them the package up there she's they reviewing it and uh we're going to know more when they assign someone for the you know for the program uh once we uh find out who the person is then i will be talking to that person directly um but uh yes we constantly put pressure on we, i would never let it go that's for sure yeah um i think uh governor scott recognizes my number and automatically gives it some. <laughs> so, <laughs> problem there. Commissioner Carr? I'll just echo some of those same uh, comments that the other commissioners have made. Uh, to me, it's mind boggling that we've got a town that is affected so much uh, and an economy that's affected so much by the river and the importance of the river. Um, so, I would also just encourage the residents and uh, the citizens of Tarpon Springs to continue to reach out to 
uh, these elected officials. I also reached out to the county commissioners and the administrator, and they're sending some notes also up to the governor's office uh, based on what I said, too. Um, it, it just shows the importance of, although we are a city within the state, we still have to lobby for money for the state to spend the money here. Um, when I looked at the budget and you see the amount of money that's spent in projects throughout the state, um, it's, it's kind of a head scratcher to ask, why are we paying for some of the projects that we're paying for out of our budget? Um, when you see the state paying for a lot of these things. So um, it, it is a uh, effort that I think that we do have to lobby ourselves for. So thanks for everything you've done, Mayor, and uh, the yeah. communications of the governor's office. Uh, just to let you know that um, the Pinellas County Commission, the right behind us, Commission Long, who is the chairperson, she sent a uh, letter to, uh, to the governor as well. So, yeah, we have their support as well. And thank you. We're now going to the public comments. Yes, please come to the podium. If you state your name and your address for the record, please. Uh, Elizabeth Posner, 1259 Windy Bay Shoal in Tarpon Springs. And um, I would like to say that this, mor or this morning I was at a meeting with a staffer from Gus Billy Rockus' office. Um, we're working on getting him on the uh, on the list to become a congressman again in <laughs> 2018. And um, she mentioned, we mentioned the Anclot River project and how it had been turned down, and she told me that Gus is going to be looking at federal funding for us. He's going to be doing some exploring uh, federally for us. So that's, that was kind of calming to me. <laughs> but another question to you is, what can we do as a community to let uh, the governor and put pressure on our government to help us. What can we sign petitions? Can we have meetings? How do we get the word out? Because obviously people aren't aware of what's going on. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Mayor, if I may. Sure. Of course, go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. By the way, um, the the congressman's efforts are going to be crucial. It's kind of in a tiered system, right? So. The city put forth, I believe, uh, achieved thirty to forty thousand for uh, the impact study and staff time to get our our ducks in a row for that. The county provided us about three hundred thousand dollars for our permits. So the state was supposedly going to give us about nine hundred thousand dollars for the spoil site. Then that would set us up to get in the Army Corps budget, which is what the congressman needs to do for the actual dredge itself. That, and that really is the big deal, right? That's going to be the big, big push. So um, we all need to be, as I mentioned, we all need to keep reaching out to Sprawls' office and Jack's office for the money from the state for the spoil site. But the big picture, I think I mentioned this in, in my memo, that we can't lose sight of is exactly what you set up there, is um, continue to encourage and help um, Gus uh, to lobby the Army Corps that were in their budget for dredging. Because we could have our permits ready, our spoil site ready, but if we don't get in the Army Corps' budget, the dredge doesn't happen. So that's where it is on the federal level, and where, and where that's where we need to help the, the uh, congressman. But petitions and so forth, I mean, anything's better than nothing, but I just think persistent, respectful, and I can't emphasize respectful enough, respectful contact with all of our representatives is the best thing you can do. Yeah, letter, absolutely, letters, yes, absolutely, letters. Directly to the governor. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Any other comments? Here, none. Well, thank you very much. We are now going to the item number two, which is another presentation for the general fund update, uh, fiscal year 2017 and budget overview 2018. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, Ron Herring, Finance Director. Uh, tonight we have the general fund update as of through April 30th, 2017, and the budget fiscal year 2018, a brief overview. And as of April 30th, 2017, we're 58% through the year. The total budget is for the general fund, which is the largest fund of the city, is 23.3 million. 
Revenues at the end of April are 15.1 million. That's 65% we've received. And as mentioned below, most of why we're over 58% is because property taxes. We receive, uh, like at the end of April, we've received 94% of the property tax revenues as of the end of April. Expenditures, 13.7 million, about 59%. We're 1% over the 58% through the end of April, but most of that, as mentioned down below, is uh, if we've had some expenditures, the cemetery land purchase, and within some departments, we've had some vacation sellback, especially during December, we offer the vacation sellback. So like I said, we had the 15.1 million of revenues, 13.7 million of expenditures for a difference of 1.4 million. Now, that's, a, that's a nice number at the end of April, but by the end of the year, those expenditures are gonna creep up and be pretty close to the revenues, pretty, pretty even with them, maybe a little bit over. Uh, this graph is showing the general fund revenues expenditures as of April 30th for the previous five years. The, the blue graphs, the blue bar, I'm sorry, is the revenues and the oranges colored bar is the expenditures. And as you can see at this time every year, we're between revenues are about between 1.3 and 1.6 over the expenditures. And uh, revenues at the end of April 30th, we had the 15.1 million, as mentioned before. It's an increase of 456,987 over fiscal year 2016 at April 30th. And the majority of the increase is $447,000 due to property taxes and which the taxable values of properties increased 6.4% this year. Now, I like to always look at all the revenues in the general fund. There's like 150 line items of revenues, but especially the top 10 revenues. And what I've got here is a budget for fiscal year 2017, actuals through April 30th, 2017, and then our projection through the end of 2017. And on the far right, whether we're gonna be over or under budget. And as starting with the property taxes at top, we're, we're gonna come in on budget and maybe come over a little about 9 million, 9,000, I wish it was 9 million, but <laughs> 9,000. Utility tax electric, well, about 9,000. One of the big ones that's been giving me a little heartburn the last year or so, and I, I told some other cities, is the electric franchise fee. And in talks with other cities and, um, and with Duke Energy, they've had two rate decreases during the last year, which is, contributed a lot to that 185,000, which is in yellow there of decreases in um, electric franchise fee. But I, I, maybe they've already increased the rates, but I know I just looked at today's receipt and one from last month, and for the first time in a year, our revenues for the electric fan franchise fee increased. So I might get a hold of our rep and see if maybe they've already increased the rates for the, um, on the Duke Energy franchise fees. Half cent sales tax going down about 21,000. You know, that's our estimate, but I, like I say, I just looked at this month's receipt we got this month, and it's, it's over what we got last year, so that I might be a little bit too conservative there. EMS fees are per the contract at the uh, 1,428,000. Interfund transfers are what are budgeted. Communication service tax. Um, this is one that's been gradually de decreasing, as mentioned down on the bottom there, since 2005, when the, the peak year was 1,249,522. It's gradually decreased every year, so we're seeing another decrease this year of that 37,000. It's in yellow there. A lot of the explanation is a lot of people are just getting rid of their landlines, and, uh, and it's just causing that decrease. Uh, revenue share sharing state sales tax um, going down 13,000, but I'm hoping it won't go down 13. We usually, the fiscal year for the state ends June 30th, and then they come back and do an audit, and we get a, like an extra payment in August. So I'm hoping that, you know, we might not have a decrease there, but so far conservatively, I've put in a, a negative 13,000 there. And then water utility tax with the water sales have increased. We've got an, about 50,000 plus there. And fire fees are per the contract at the 402000 And if the top 10 revenues weren't enough, I, I thought I'd throw in the next 10 revenues. No, I'm not going to go through all 150. But, <laughs> but hospitals, the hospital lease, it's in the same thing with the budget, the actual through the year, the projection, and over under. Hospital is per the lease. Uh, building permits have been coming in nicely with all the, I know the work in the building department doing with all the new construction, so might be go over by 39,000. Interest earnings aren't, don't think are gonna come up to projection. A uh, uh, library co-op, that's money from the county. 
Uh, we budgeted 195. It looks like we're only going to get 178,000 this year. Local business taxes possibly will decrease. School resource officers per the contract. Uh, code enforcement. This is another one that sort of drives me nuts sometimes because it's always so erratic. Like last year, like you see, we've only received 11,000 so far this year. Uh, last year we got 179,000, but it was we had two or three claims that were 30, 40 thousand dollars each that put us over budget. Uh, and then utility tax and franchise fees on, na on natural gas, hopefully will come in about 7,000 over budget each. And then court finds another erratic one. We've only gotten about 25,000 uh, so far this year. And just to point out, with like on the um, the top ten revenues, and the, the the net decrease is 189,000 on on those top ten revenues, but most of it's because of that franchise fee electric. And then on that next ten, we're down about 82,000, mostly because of the code enforcement and court fines. And just trying to mention here with the franchise fees electric. A couple of months ago, I got with other cities just to find out, you know, is everybody in the same boat? But they, everybody was in the same boat. Their franchise fees are down. And that's when I got to Duke Energy and found out they've had two rate decreases the past year. Uh, Duke sales or revenues went down 4.4% from 2015 to 16. Duke sales are down 8.59% in 2017 through March. Um, and Duke plans on rate increases this next year, but talked to the rep last year, and she's not really sure if they are or not, but like I said, this, when I saw the last two receipts, maybe they already did it, and the, she just wasn't sure of that. And then just another side note, the 30-year franchise agreement with the city expires September 28, 2020, and then if the city wants, you know, they have to redo the agreement, or, and if they want, they could uh, adjust the rate if possible. And this graph is a general fund again, expenditures by category for the last five years through April 30th. Uh, the, blue gar the blue bar is showing personnel expenses, as you see increasing gradually over the five years, mostly salary increases. Um, orange bars are the operating expenses going from 2.7 million to 3 million in 2017. Uh, capital expenses, a gray bar, sort of, you know, depending on what capital expenditures are budgeted. In 2015, 873,000, that was mostly, we used, had some nursing home money that we sold and we were using it towards that. And in 2017, the 1,050,000, that is money that's been being spent. We've had money for the, um, the land purchase at the cemetery and the exterior of this building. Part of the exterior of this building is being funded by the general fund and the penny fund. And the expenditures year to date through April 30th for this current year were 13.7 million. And it's an increase of 736,000 over last year. Personnel was just an increase of 45,000, but there was a mix of salaries being up 203,000, retirement down 246,000 because we had some uh, decreases on that. And health, and dental insurance, and workers' comp down 23,000, uh, I'm sorry, up 23,000 and 35,000. Operating expenses about plus 164,000 and there was, wasn't nothing really in particular. It was like there was across the board increases all across the board between 10, 20,000. Um, but the big increase it cost the 736,000 was the land purchase at the cemetery, 257,000 and city hall exterior improvements that have been expensed to the general fund of 390,000. Um, this is a slide I always love to try to project the general fund unassigned fund balance and between you know you have 150 lines of revenues and about a thousand lines of expenditure items but the unassigned fund balance at the end of last year was 8,820,443. Uh, looking at the revenues the slide before were the top 10 revenues we had to decrease you know projected of 189,000 decrease hopefully it's not that much. Then those next 10 revenues, a decrease of 82, uh, close to 83,000. Interfund transfer adjustment for administrative fees. The enterprise funds transfer money to the general fund for, to cover administrative fee costs. The allocation had not been looked at since 2009. So I went back last month and tried to figure out, using the same methodology and, and formulated, and came up that really the, the enterprise funds need to contribute about another 177,000 
uh, to the general fund. And this is probably an allocation that should be looked at each year instead of waiting from 2009 to do it now. And then we had a grant received for landscaping on alternate 19 that we didn't budget for. So where there was zero revenue adjustments and for the expenditures for the departments, they, the departments do a good job of watching their departments. They're all at like 58%. They monitor them pretty good. And roughly, I'm, saying, I'm looking at the projected unassigned fund balance, they're keeping about the same at the 8820000 at the end of this year. And the slide we always look at here is the history of the unassigned fund balance for the last 10 years. As you can see, in 2008, we were at $8.7 it started going up a little bit and then going down, but for the last four years, for 2014 through 2017, we're hanging right in there at 8.8 .8 million. Uh, this slide is also dealing with the unassigned fund balance. So what it's showing in the blue bars is the unassigned fund balance uh, for the last four years, plus the projection of the 8.2 million for, uh, I'm sorry, 8.8 .8 million for 2017. But the orange bars are the 20% minimum fund balance requirement per our fund balance policy. So you can see each year we've got, you know, a little over between 4.2, 4.6 million each year of a cushion between what we're required to have and what we do have at the 8.8 .8 million. And my, I had like five slides on the budget, but I didn't know if you wanted to, any questions on the general fund before I just went into the budget or just go right in. Just go ahead and finish the whole thing. Okay. Well. As you know, you got some books on your on your dais. Is there? I know you probably love them. They're three inches. They got 341 pages of budget items there. Um, I know you'd be looking at that tonight, reading that and stuff. But we also, <laughs> I also, I'm sorry. I also have electronic copies. I'm ready to send you and stuff if you'd like those. And I can take those back if you really don't want those books there. But and in there is also an executive summary we started last year, which tries to go through and. Um, and, well, I think I've got a slide on that, but tries to summarize all the information in here by summary for revenues, expenditures by type, by function, and some other um, highlights. And like I say, the budget document, the three-ring binder has detail on all funds. You know, it's got everything you want to know in there on the budget, you know, sorted by fund, revenues, expenditures, justification for each line item, payroll. The executive summary summarizes all the accounts that are in the three ring binder by total city, the general fund and water and sewer fund. It also has more information on uh, the budget process, the objectives, goals, policies, uh, some information on personnel, property values and millage rate, the debt, which we only have the water plant debt, and the capital improvement program. Uh, the, Process to date, you know, it's a long process. It starts back in March, the departments are entering their budgets, and then finance compiles the budget request, projects revenues, balances the funds, and produces this budget document in April. The budget was submitted to the city manager and budget advisory committee in May of 2017. The city manager has met with the department heads. The budget advisory committee has met with every department. And just a summary of some of the numbers here, the total city proposed budget for 2018 is 55442445 It's an increase of 210854 over the previous year budget, or 0.38%. And the five largest funds are the general fund at 23.6 million, the water and sewer fund at 15.8, sanitation fund at 4.8, the penny fund at 2.6, the stormwater fund at 2.4, for a total of about 49 million, and those five funds make up like 89% of the $55 million budget. And down below, just the capital improvement program, things that are designated for capital, major capital projects of 7.5 million. And capital outlay, that's minor capital outlay, trucks, vehicles, equipment, that's uh, 1,388,000 1, for 8,911,000 of capital outlay. And the, what's in the budget book, we have some assumptions. That all funds are in balance. The general fund's balanced without using any unassigned fund balance. Property values are increased at 7.5%. They're really, the, they gave us an estimate June 1st of 7.98%, but we're being a little bit conservative here. Uh, the property tax revenue increase based on that is 588,000, 567,129 is in the general fund and 21,687 that increase goes to the CRA fund. 
a salary increase is funded at 3.5% for a total cost of 630000 Health, dental, life insurance, we've budgeted a 10% increase. We don't know what it'll finally be, but that's a cost of 310000 Workers' comp, we've budgeted 8%, an increase of 32000 Property insurance, we do a 15% increase, comes to about 80, almost 81000 Retirement accounts funded at the actual requirement, the police is at 8.14%. It went down from 8.79, a decrease of 26,000. Fire goes by dollar amounts from their actuary, so it's going 728,000 from 709, so it's an increase of 19,000. And general fund employees is just at the 8.7%. The police and fire are defined benefit plans. Uh, as you probably know, the general employees is a defined contribution. And the budget process going forward, July 11th at that meeting, the, the DR-420 will be on the agenda. That's just giving the city manager approval to sign the DR-420, which goes back and it's setting the millage rate that you're proposing. It also sets the date of the first public hearing. August 3rd is the first budget workshop that's scheduled. August 10th, the second budget workshop if necessary. And September 6th is the first public hearing on the tentative millage and budget. And September 19th, the second and final public hearing. And then after that, I'm done with the budget for a while. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, I had a question. Mr. Harry, thank you for the presentation. I want to thank you for the good work that you do. I have a question to ask you on the very, very first page. Uh, the slides are not numbered, but if you go at the very, very beginning. Uh, first slide or? Uh, no, keep, 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 keep going. Keep going. Something the, I also did. Huh? I was going to say something I forgot to mention is just so you know, personnel expenses in the general fund are like seventy percent of the expenses of the general fund. There. Okay. Sorry, forgot to mention that. The the question that I I like to ask you is at the uh, the very very beginning of the, your presentation. The slides are not number, but um. Uh, there, where you say that the revenue uh, is fifteen point one million. Yes. Up to date. And the expenditures of 13.7, difference of uh, 1.3 million. But you also say that we still have the uh, uh, cemetery uh, plot to pay for it, uh, property to pay for, also the uh, buy, buy back the vacation time. Yes. Uh, are we expecting to have any surplus now that we have $1.3 million plus? Well, that's as April 30th right now. By the end of. Early to say that? Pardon me? Is it too early? Yes, by the end of that's what I was trying to say. This is nice where we have a 1.4 million surplus. By the end of the year, though, like the one that had, had the graphs with the bars, the expenditures are going to come up and probably equal the revenues that are coming in. The, uh, the cemetery uh, property doesn't come out of the cemetery fund? Cemet within the general fund, but it's a cemetery perpetual care fund. We reserve it off separately. It's about, we're currently about 2.1 million in there at the end of last year. Well, this this to... land purchase will be taken out of that um, perpetual care fund. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you count the pages, page number six, you, you made a comment about uh, the uh, the Duke uh, Electric Company 30-year uh, franchise agreement will be expired in 2020. Uh, and you're suggesting that we negotiate and hopefully we get more than six percent if possible do we know what the other cities are getting everybody is still at six percent still the same yeah even the, the, I mean, when i was talking to our duke rep she sort of said well i'm not sure if you can increase it over six percent but she was going to check but i know statewide i have we have a local list serve of all our finance people and some cities and other counties had a higher rate but maybe We'll try to find that. I've got a conference next week. I was going to query some of our other cities and see what they're, if they're planning on increasing their rate. Okay. Uh, I have a couple comments to make in regards to a 2002 proposed budget. Um, it's encouraging that the property value is going to be increased 7.5% next year. And it was 6 this year, and it's going to be 7.5 next year. 
Yes, it's we, that's our conservative estimate. We got the estimate of really 7.98, and we'll find out July 1st. On July 1st, we'll get the certified preliminary estimate on July 1st, and that's what at the next meeting on July 11th, that'll have what the uh, actual amount of taxable value is and what the increase is. This the 7.5 is based on the June 1st estimate they sent out to us. Thank you. And this is uh, the second year in a row that we're going to have a truth balance budget without using any uh, of the surplus money. Yes. Thank you. And uh, good answer. <laughs> um, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Lecourt, yourself, your staff, uh, all the employees of the city, the city employees, and uh, also the budget advisory committee for the work that you guys did. Thank you so much. Vice Mayor Fanta. Yes, thank you, and, um, and, uh, and uh, uh, thank you, Ron, for, for doing these quarterly updates. Now, I, I think it really helps in the guidance and discussion of this, and it helps us understand things better for our budget hearings this summer. Um, I know we lowered the tax rate a very, very small amount um, this past year. Have we realized that yet, or, or, or and if not, when, 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 when do we uh, realize that? Well, as, as part of the monies we're receiving, it went from 5.45 to 5.42. So where it's about a $45,000 revenue decrease to the city. But, but, but well, like you said, we're still showing more than last year. Yes. Okay, all right. That was my main question. Thank you on that. Uh, we haven't frozen the lease yet on the hospital, right? Because that's until they're CO'd, correct? Yes, starting in 2018, that's when we're required to take the amount that they're billed over 300,000 and we're gonna reserve it off. And for the next, five years or whatever, I think it's up to a certain year, five years from now, if they get it done, then we'll take that reserve that's built up and then pay them for them if they get the hospital ER room done by the allowed time. So we're, we're still collecting the money, but we're saving that difference for them? Yes, we're still gonna require, we're still gonna bill them the full amount. I think next year is 349,000. We're gonna take that 49,000 at next year and reserve it off. Okay, all right. and. Um uh, I saw the code enforcement, but I think that's self-explanatory. It just depends on the environment Dramatic. and the means. Yeah. There's not really a, a rhyme or reason. Um, I saw the increase in health insurance. I would ask again, like I do every year, that we go out to bid for our health insurance. I believe it's our it's our largest um, uh, expenditure outside of payroll, and uh, I'd like to see us go out to bid for that um, uh, this year. Florida League might still be the, the the best deal in town, but I think it just it's just sound fiscal policy for one of your major line items that we go out to bid for that, especially when it when it keeps increasing. Um, as far as um, the communications tax or, or the or the or the franchise tax, with 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 that with having less phones, and then you said with the one with Duke Energy, we have some input on. If we if we lobby to increase that rate, is that effectively us? taxing people more or, or, or how does that work directly yes it's a franchise agreement based on uh, duke energy has to pay it but obviously they pass it on to the consumers okay so i'm just like us you know if we negotiate that or whatever just be, be to be mindful of that i think we'd all want to be in the mid-range like, like you said of what people mm -hmm. are doing i certainly don't want to be charging less but i don't want to be the one charging charging more oh. so be in the mid-range so th th thank you very much for this update sure Thank you. I, Ron, I just want to thank you for, for these updates. This is so helpful to all of us, and you're doing an outstanding job. Really oh, appreciate it. Um, and I want to thank our budget advisory board and um, all our directors of our departments for you know bringing their ideas together, their numbers together to the city manager and to you and, and crunching numbers and putting, you know, getting this budget ready for us because I cannot wait to go through this book. <laughs> Uh, over the summer, um, but this uh, little um, little book that you put together to summarizes. Uh, a, we call it the executive summary. Yeah, it's, it's it's a great help. I mean, I do go yeah. page by page, but this is a great help as well. And, and thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Um, I have to agree with Vice Mayor Banther on the health insurance. I I think I might want to see us go out to bid uh, this year. I don't think. Well, I think only once or twice since 2008 that I've been sitting up here, uh, we went out to bid. And then we came across um, the Florida League of Cities, and, and that's we've been going through them since. So um, 
it might be time for us to just to why not you know we owe it to the city to the residents mm -hmm. to save as much money as we can and um i see that um our revenues is increasing for property values i mean it's good for us for income i mean you know other it also means that um, we could be paying more in taxes as an as an individual because our values are going up. Um, but it's good for my business that I'm in too. So <laughs> I'm in the mortgage business. So it just means you know more homes are selling and uh, better you know, but at a higher rate. But um, you know I, I want to thank you for oh I did have another question it's about. Um, Duke Energy. So if more people use solar, do you think that our rates would go up from Duke Energy? Would that have an effect on it? Oh, I got the feeling if you had a lot of people using solar, yeah, what the, what the city receives would go down, the revenues. Revenues would go down, yeah. right. Okay. Because I, I see that happening in the near future here, so um, we need to prepare for that as well. Um, but again, thank you and okay. for all your hard work. Thank you. I just forgot one thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Sorry. I, 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 though, though I forgot this, I think it's kind of the uh, most important. In the next uh, update you have for us, could you um, prepare a, an analysis of this, um, what Tallahassee passed? I guess we're all going to be voting on it, the uh, extra homestead exemption. That on surface sounds great that we're all going to get uh, less, we're all, we're all going to be paying le le less in property taxes. I'm just speaking for myself, that's Tallahassee passing the tax burden on the cities. But I, I, I would like to show for the record, at least now, in, in your analysis, what you would estimate, if that passes, our loss of revenue would be, and what, what we'd have to increase the millage rate to make up for that loss of revenue. It's $472,000, and you'd have to increase the millage rate about a quarter mil from 5.42 to 5.2. Seven seven, I think it is. Now, is that being voted on? Is that for this fall, or is that for the general election? November two thousand eighteen, it gets voted on. I think we need to, um, and I, I'm I'm only including you because you're 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 our finance guy, obviously. But we really have to stay on top of that because who doesn't like a break in their property taxes? But it's not going to effectively be one because we we will have an immediate deficit that that we have to cure. And having a degree in economics, I, I understand the trickle-down effect of, well, more homes will be sold, more money, more tax revenue, et cetera. But that's realized three, four, five years down the road, best-case scenario. We would have an immediate loss of revenue we, 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 that, that, we, that we, we, we would have to cover. So I think we just need to keep that on our forefront mm -hmm. going in the future and uh, make sure we're educating our, 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 our residents on that in a way that is appropriate for us to. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Actually, what are we doing is we're shifting to taxes. That's all it is. That's all we do. Mayor, do you mind if I have a comment? Of course. Ron, does that include the EMS component, loss of revenue from the county at 472? No. Are you talking about the EMS contract or something? Yeah, the, the money that we get from the county for EMS, does that also include in the 472? No. How, how much loss is that? I don't have that number. I, no. Like I say, I think the EMS is going to – the EMS is – Homestead yeah. exemption? I would, I would think it would affect them because they do base the EMS on their own millage rate. So, yes, I mean, based on whatever the contract is, I know the contract for EMS is increasing, I think there's a 3% this next year. So, yes, they do have their own separate millage rate, and it would affect them, but I don't have the dollar amount. I think our contract expires in 2020 um, on that. Also, um, this is set to kick in in fiscal year 2020, correct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Commission Core. Well, yeah, that's okay. Most of my questions are already asked. Um, thank you for presenting. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to echo, uh, Vice Mayor mentioned uh, about the franchise fee from Duke Energy. That is something that we all pay as residents directly. It's, it's passed straight through to us. So even if we increase it, it's an additional tax from the residents. Um, and then the, what um, Vice Mayor also brought up with the, the building on the millage rate decrease, I was going to recommend looking at that, how's that going to be built in. Um, in the future years, just to echo what he said also. Um, but I did have one question, and I heard that we haven't dipped into the reserve in the past couple years. Why is it level um, over the past two years based on your chart? Shouldn't it have gone up at some, is it like an interest-bearing account at all, or where is that at right now? Well, all the, all the money is in the, you know, in the checking account or save it public funds money market, and we have some other federal instruments also. 
Okay, I, mean, I was just curious because I know if it, even if we get like 1%, it's $80,000 that we would get for the reserve funds. So I don't know if that's an option for us to look at further. Well, well when, the un it's, when the unassigned, to get to the unassigned fund balances, you're taking the revenue, I don't want to go into too much detail, you're taking together, uh, the revenues for the year, the expenditures, but there's also within the fund balance of the general fund about 10 other items. So when I'm closing out the fund to get to that unassigned, I'm, I'm I'm recalculating these other buckets of money before I get to the final unassigned fund balance. But if you want, I can go over that with we'll you. We'll spend some time this summer, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for presenting sure. this stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Sure. We are now going to the public comments on this item. Here to Lacks 514 Ashland Avenue. Uh, thank you, Ron. That was very informative and educational, I think, to our residents here. And it shows the stability we've been able to maintain over all these years where we went through the 08, 09 crunch and then stabilized. And then we come out pretty much where we went in. However, there was a little thing in there, and I'm glad Susan, Miss Commissioner, Michio Slattery, kid, I'm not sure which one to use, sorry, Sue, brought up a good point about the solar. As more and more people go to solar, and if Duke's not, and, and you gotta realize, this is all, I mean, the big energy companies aren't wanting to get into solar until they can make money off of it. So, how can we make money off of it? Why not? September 2020 is when the contract with Duke expires. How about let's being, I mean, this just came to my head a moment ago. I mean, we've talked about it before, but the city of Gainesville has their own municipal electric company. All right? So we've got three years possibly to look at that and see how we could set it up ourselves. Now, how do they do it? They generate some of their own power. If you look at their partnership with the University of Florida, they've got a uh, cellulosic uh, con conversion plant to generate energy. And then, you know, most electrics buy energy from somewhere else, but where else would we have a chance that we here in Tarpon Springs have a potential? We've got a Stauffer site out there sitting vacant. We could lease it, purchase it, eminent domain it, whatever you want, put our solar fields there, generate our own electricity. We sell that to the residents. Then you could lower your utility tax because you're going to be generating the electricity yourself or purchasing it. You can charge administrative fees, but you don't have to tax your own residents on a utility that's generating their own electricity. We can cut out Duke. We can do our part in climate change. Think about it. Thank you. Any other comments on this item? We hear none. Thank you, Mr. Herrick. We now go to the item number three, cemetery irrigation project. Mr. Paul Smith will do the presentation. Good evening, Paul Smith, Public Services Director, and I'm pleased to introduce this presentation to you. This is a showcase pr uh, presentation of a project we've done in-house with the city. We're very proud of the staff that went out and got trained to perform this project. Uh, the performance on the project and the results and cost savings that go with it. I toured the project with City Manager LaCorris and he agreed this is something he wanted to uh, present to you all. So with that, I'd like to introduce some folks here. Uh, the presenter is going to be our Chief Utility Mechanic, Francisco Pavez. He's standing here to my left. He was also the Project Manager. And also in the audience, we have Justin Economos. He's a Utility Mechanic. And we also have Michael Sarukas, Utility Mechanic. 
and we appreciate them coming tonight uh, on their time to, uh, to see this presentation. They were an important part of getting this project done, and I'm very proud of what they've done. And uh, with that, Francisco, are you about ready to launch that? Okay. Well, while he's finalizing his preparation there, I'll just say a little more. Uh, the, the cemetery, an irrigation system properly functioning is the foundation of having a healthy turf, an attractive grounds, something that we believe we owe to the community to respect those that have passed before us. It's a perpetual care facility. It's one that we take care of from here on out. And some of the technology we're able to use, there's been quite some development in irrigation systems over the years. In the old days, it was a series of spaghetti of wires, and now it's gone to what they call a two-wire system, which Francisco will talk a little bit about here. But um, these guys work with our lift stations and our SCADA, so they were the perfect group to work on this. They're the technology guys that we have in our department, and they really took to this. They went to specialized rainbird training to learn about the system and then applied what they learned in the field. And I can tell you that if we had contracted this work out, Something we've learned over the years is if you don't really know the details of the job, in other words, a whole bunch of buried stuff underground that isn't over 30 or 40 years entirely mapped, you're looking at a lot of change orders that would result in a very expensive project. So by having total control of it in-house, we're able to get to the bottom of it, own it, and uh, successfully complete it. So with that, um, thank you, and I'd like to turn it over. Thank you, Paul. Good evening, board and mayor. Uh, we uh, looked at this project together and we had essentially a vision that we wanted to make the city of Tarpon Springs its own service and we kind of try to explain it with this image where we can see the cemetery is dark and in the center we actually have uh, water. The, we had this vision and we, thanks for the help with Paul, we try to make it a reality. I want to talk about a little bit of what we had before. Uh, from the history of the cemetery, we had a steel pipe system, which was uh, at the beginning a very good system, but as metal is in the ground for years, it starts rusting and it's uh, very hard to repair. Uh, later on, there was another system installed with PVC pipes. The problem with that was that it was poorly installed and the technology at the time wasn't very up to par with what we needed, especially on a commercial system. And uh, then we came up with a newer system that had a better controls, but it was multiple controls. You didn't have centralized control, and honestly, all of them were poorly implemented without a master plan. No idea of congruency. So that led us to a challenge. We needed a system that was autonomous, simple, reliable, something that can serve many locations and any time of day, any time we want it. We just press a button and make it happen. Uh, needed to be reliable, because if we don't have any water, we can't grow grass and make it pretty for everybody to be there. Uh, efficient, we have this ability to implement the system ourselves and save money, lots of it. And that led us to the last point where we wanted to have a smart system, something that will work for us, as well as us working for it. And that was, as Paul mentioned, the two-wire system. That's the uh, beauty about the two-wire system is that if you can see on the right, um, before you had hundreds of wires to run a zone to water the park, or I'm sorry, the cemetery. And we used the new system to come up with two wires, as the name calls it, which aids in diagnosing, diagnosis and uh, in-house repairs. The two-wire also makes it possible to increase the size, so as we're getting more property, maybe we can implement it down the road. And it makes diagnosing very, very easy. So here's our in-house process. Uh, Paul brought it up to us as an idea, and uh, we said yes, and we started with training. We went to training. We spent a week or so in the south of Florida, getting uh, trained on the best system that we can install. Uh, we spent weeks evaluating it, and uh, we actually came up with a two-wire system. Then we implemented design. There was a system already in the ground that we had to overcome. Uh, we just wanted to do a central nervous system change where we could control 
what was already on the ground without having uh, to change too much. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Then we began an installation is when we found our issues and uh, we started to optimize the system, which comes down on a later slide. And we gave it to the cemetery staff to manage. So they were trained and they learned the process as it was being installed, which is great and something we don't get when we have a contractor. So the project turned to turned to be a little bit harder than it actually was. We came up with this design. We had to change the piping, and we came up with a lot of issues and uh, things that were in the ground we did not foresee. Uh, we ended up having to hand dig 5,000 feet of trench. We couldn't use a trencher because uh, there's graves and there's other piping that we could have actually hit, so hand digging was the only way possible. Uh, we installed 4,000 feet of wire, which was placed in a conduit to keep it safe from future diggings, because this is an active dig site. Uh, and uh, five to 600 feet of pipe were actually repaired. That was something we did not foresee. We did not think that it was that bad on the ground. Uh, we replaced the valves with new valves that actually are reclaim proof, so that they will last a long time. And uh, it we also implemented a nine ground grid system which will keep us from getting lightning strikes and hopefully keep our system safe throughout the storms since we get over 14,000 lightning strikes a year here in Florida. And here's some of the show and tell. Uh, on the left you see the before and obviously the after on the right. Uh, this was denoted over 50 sites in, on the cemetery property uh, we can see examples of poor distribution, pipes making turns that don't need to have, and actually old infrastructure. Here's one of my favorites. On the left, we have nine elbows at 90 degrees to get the flow on the pipe. Uh, this is pretty impressive because uh, if you start with, let's say, 10 gallons per minute, after nine of those, you're probably getting about one gallon per minute coming out. And we've actually improved that over 50 sites in that cemetery. And uh, on the left, we have our control systems. So you have to run around from one side to the other one to turn one clock and then turn the other one on. And hopefully it will work. If not, you have to actually assign times to each zone itself. Now you have the ability to do it all at once, even with the ability to control it through any smartphone. So staff has that ability as well. And here's some of our conclusions. Uh, we've saved over $100,000 by taking this project in ourselves. And one of the words that comes to mind when I'm thinking about it is change order. We had no change orders because everything was done here. Uh, we saved time and we trained staff. They are able to troubleshoot the system and they know where everything goes. Hydraulics was a uh, side effect. We didn't know it was this bad and we have improved the flow of water significantly. This helps us conserve resources and implement them elsewhere. Full automation, the system runs without having to be babysat. <laughs> and um, the irrigation is also reduced by 50%, so staff doesn't have to monitor or start irrigating at times that are not beneficial for the turf. Quality of construction, we spec all the, all the components that were going on the ground, therefore we know that they're gonna last and we know where to get new ones for replacement. And the system is also smart. It can diagnose itself, learn, <laughs> find leaks, and it will walk you right where the leaks are. It's actually very uh, useful for staff to save time and, uh, and conserve resources. And I would like to say thank you to uh, our city manager, uh, Paul Smith, public service director, or Raymond Page, our utility superintendent. Uh, I'm there, obviously, for the presentation. <laughs> Uh, Justin Economos, Teg One, he took a huge part of this project uh, as management on the field. Michael Sarukas, great part of this project as well. Uh, David Witoski for putting up with us through the time we uh, were at his cemetery. He was uh, uh, having to deal with all the digging and keeping up with the turf as well. Renee Hudson, our cemetery assistant operator, she now knows the system inside and out and can diagnose it and work it uh, very well as well as Michael, Michael Keaton, uh, our cemetery laborer, who's also was there through this process and now knows the cemetery irrigation very well. Our city uh, 
City of Tarpon Springs Water Division helped us with a lot of water connections that were above our uh, ability to perform. And uh, I would also like to say special thanks to Sean Plumley and Alex Steely, which uh, worked for our tech staff and were very helpful with the labor throughout this four month period. Uh, that's about sums it up, and if you have any questions. Well, thank you for the presentation. And uh, our cemetery looks really nice, and with this irrigation, it will look even nicer. Um, I'd like to thank all the employees that got involved working on this project and doing the project in the house will save a lot of money, plus you have the expertise to maintain it. But Mr. Smith, uh, do we have a program in place where we can recognize employees for uh, performing above their responsibilities? Yes, we do several ways. Uh, one of them is we have a policy 10, which actually looks for certification opportunities for employees. And when they go and get these certifications that are of mutual benefit to them and the city, uh, we recognize them with a percent pay increase. So it's a permanent uh, increase to their pay and a skill that uh, helps them develop in their careers and also the city directly, like with this project. For doing a project like this, which is not a usual thing, it happens probably once a lifetime, uh, you don't replace an irrigation that often. Uh, I like to see the employees to be recognized, especially to be recognized if we invite them over here and just to say thank you and let everybody know uh, the work that they do. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Kick. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, recognizing that our system was not the best. Um, I just have one question. When it says, responds to weather changes, so if it's raining, does it not come on? Yes, and it also has internet connection where it will forecast the, um, wow. sorry, it will forecast the area. So you can enter your zip code and it will know ahead of time. Um, and you can look it up on your cell phone, it will tell you uh, hey, there's a front coming. We're we're considering not irrigating, but uh, it lets you do the decision as well. That's Has email awesome. capabilities. That's awesome because you know so many of us have sprinkler systems, you know, in our neighborhoods, and it's pouring down rain, and our, some people's sprinklers are on because you know you're not going to run out there and turn whatever you do. I don't know what to do. Reprogram it. But so this is that's a great that that alone uh, I'm totally impressed with. But thank you so much for this. No problem. Vice Mayor Panther. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, we have some of the most forward-thinking staff when it comes to things like this and public works and, 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 and any cemetery. I'm just very thankful that you all are thinking of, of these things, and I think it's definitely um, a great thing we do, and especially in the recent updates to the cemetery for the faithful departed, that we have a nice resting place in town. I think, I think that, that's, that's very important. As far as your presentation, obviously, it's way above my pay grade. I mean, I can barely use my own sprinkler system. <laughs> but um, I, I think it has all, 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 all that's needed to um, provide the proper irrigation, and I appreciate all the technological uh, you know, you, you know, aspects of it that I'm sure will save us money down the road, obviously. So, so, so I appreciate your work, and I agree with the mayor that when, when, when this is implemented, we should uh, recognize all the staff and people that help make this possible. Thank you. Thank you. Commission call. Uh, Paul, thanks for, for everything you guys did with your staff and taking lead on this also. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to echo, again, the comments that are made tonight. It's great to see an in-house project and that's something that then had to go out to bid and then done. And to see the $100,000 in savings is huge for other projects that could be worked on throughout the city at a sooner pace <laughs> instead of uh, postponing it until further years. So thanks again for everything you've done. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? Any public comments on this item? Here, none. Thank you very much. We are now going to the item number four, which is the athletic field feed structure. Mr. Smith, you're the front center again.
Good evening, Paul Smith again, Public Services Director. And this item uh, is a great partnership with the Parks Recreation Advisory Board and the city staff. Um, I see this as a project that's a, an excellent example of how our advisory boards work with us to advise us on um, things we can do to improve, in this case, parks and recreation. Um, this is a program where I believe we also worked well with the leagues, keeping them involved in our recommendations as we went. Uh, I believe there were two or maybe even three opportunities for leagues to come and see this very presentation that we're giving you tonight to give us their comments and their concerns. I'll just jump ahead by telling you overall the leagues embrace this. They do understand the need and the fact that they are getting excellent facilities for uh, very, very little cost. Um, there was one comment from soccer that they would prefer a different way to uh, calculate the fee, but they understood our reasoning why and said they would accept it. So um, hopefully that might head off any concerns you might have as I give you this presentation. I'd also like to recognize there are members of our Parks and Recreation Advisory Board in the audience. In fact, they're making up a good percentage of our audience tonight. And I thank them for being here. And I'll ask Jim Maurer, the vice chair, who's recently been elected as the chair of the Parks Rec Board to identify them when he comes up in just a moment. So as far as the presentation, this just gives a, a background. I'll briefly go through this, an overview of what brought us to our recommendations to you tonight. This is a joint recommendation of the advisory board and city staff, which includes not only the public services department, but uh, the public works department as well, since they're the ones that maintain the fields. Tom Funchen is in the audience uh, in case there's any questions related to his areas of the parks maintenance, uh, fields maintenance, that sort of thing. So with that, uh, I'll briefly talk about our current challenges, what brought us to, to going over this, the summary of the costs, the solutions that we propose, a brief comparison of different area field structures, the estimated cost for the leagues, and our conclusions and recommendations. So our fields are very high quality. I think that's pretty widely known. Um, they're in high demand. As a result, there's, there's not a whole lot of availability for other uses. Um, so that's something we're aware of and we need to look at. Our maintenance costs continue to rise. The last estimate was somewhere around the 170,000 per year range, but I'm confident that number's higher now. Um, I think we've done a job of accounting for those expenses, but I think there's just some increases that aren't totally accounted for there. We have a general population of 24,000 paying basically through tax dollars for the benefit of about 1,100 league members, many of which are non-residents. So it sets up a dynamic that uh, we consider, um, we recommend you consider uh, an approach based on user fee on actual field usage time. And what this will do is uh, allow the possibility for more availability as the leagues review how much use they actually need. And also, it'll allow for a more balanced cost recovery. One other thing we note from an administrative end is our uh, process for trying to verify the rosters for the leagues each season has become cumbersome. Many times we're chasing after the leagues to get the uh, <coughs> proper number of attendees or participants um, sometimes into the beginning of the season. So this approach would solve that problem because the schedules are already put together at the beginning. So if it's based on a league uh, field use time uh, on a schedule that's already submitted, it just avoids the whole roster um, issue. This is an overview of cost, but it shows you by field, also the, by type of expense, supplies, repairs, lights, staff time, irrigation supplies, pesticides, fertilizers, seed, labor, et cetera, and it totals up to that 170,000. The solutions I talked about already is the user fee type approach. I wanna emphasize here, we're really proposing a portion, a partial cost recovery. I think it calculates out to less than 25% of the actual cost is what we're proposing to you as an initial fee. We explained this to the leagues, and I think they found that to be reasonable. Um, so based on that calculation, we would propose a dollar per field per hour type approach. So if a league, you know, or different areas have multiple fields. So if they want to use three fields for three hours, that would be three times three at the dollar per hour rate that we're proposing of 250 per hour. Um, in the past, we've only billed based on field lighting. 
and that itself was a partial recovery of the cost. We had no fee for the use of the field itself. And um, as you might imagine, that left us quite short on recovering expenses. One thing we also looked at is we would propose to exempt the leagues from the recreation activity card requirements so as to minimize those administrative requirements on the leagues and the city. We feel that if we're paying a usage fee, then we probably shouldn't also charge them for the recreation card fee for the field use. Now, if they were to go on to use other city facilities, which we hope they would with the recreation, then that would incur a fee appropriate for that use. Here's a comparison of the different field fee structures, and really this is just to show that it's common for um, different local governments and areas to charge for their fields uh, per player per season or uh, per hour. Um, St. Petersburg's example there um, you'll see is totals $2.50 per hour, which is the uh, rate we're proposing to you tonight. Here's how that might impact the leagues. This was based on their actual field usage hours. This was reviewed with the leagues. Uh, that's the last column there. So it totals $39,000 as proposed based on their submitted schedules. I do believe that once that hourly rate is imposed, their schedules might go down in terms of the number of hours they're asking for, which would create less of a cost to them and also some possible field uh, availability time. In conclusion, uh, the user fee approach, talking about recovering a portion of the maintenance costs, we're recommending $2.50 per field per hour. It's a reasonable rate, and that would include the cost of the lighting, so they wouldn't be billed in addition to that for lighting. It would just be a flat fee for all field use, day or night. We would waiver that recreation activity card fee for league participants for the field use part of that only in recognition of those fees paid and we would recommend to you that the effective date is September 1st to give the leagues time to um, readjust for their upcoming seasons. So with that, uh, I'm gonna ask Jim Maurer, the vice chair of the Parks Recreation Advisory Board to come up. He's gonna give an overview of his thoughts and uh, at that point we can answer any questions. Mayor Alhousis, members of the board, city staff. My name is Jim Maurer and I'm the uh, chairman elect at present time of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm making the presentation for Celia Dubay, who is our current chairman. She was unable to attend tonight. We do have four other members of the board here. I'd like to introduce them, if I may. Sure. Uh, if you'll raise your hand when I call your name. Alice Morgan, Elizabeth Posner, Jason Clemens, and Chris DeFiori. So we're happy to have you here. I, I must say that the, the board has done a lot of work on this. We've had at least three meetings with sports officials and team managers, and there was a lot of discussion. As Paul said, uh, the soccer people would have been more amenable to a per player fee, but we just, I think we convinced them that it's just unmanageable because of the team shifting around and the players coming and going and so forth. This is just a much, much easier approach. And the, to make a long story short, the board is fully on board with the city's proposal of $2.50 an hour. And just to cut through the forest to show you that what the trees look like, $2.50 an hour if a sports team is going out to use a soccer field. If there are 10 players utilizing that field, it costs each player 25 cents to use the field for an hour. There's a lot more than 10 players out there, probably half that. It comes down to the point where they couldn't even buy a bottle of water for that charge. So there, I don't think it's a due impact on any child or family to charge these fees. And, you know, we're talking about city budgets of millions. What we're talking about here is trying to increase the city revenues by about $40,000. And as Paul said, it's only 25% of the amount we spend on the fields. All of our sports teams agree that we have some of the finest fields that they have seen. They're in excellent shape, and my hat's off to all the city employees who manage those fields. So with that, I'm going to say that, w once again, it was unanimous that we agree with the city proposal for $2.50 per hour across the board field usage fee. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, I want to thank uh, the board of um, the advisory board and thank you for your service and your advice that you provide us. Um, I'd like to, uh, Commissioner Carr, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question for Paul. Um, has the city looked at LED lights for the recreation field, or are they LED lights currently? Because I know that would probably reduce the cost and having it, they're really expensive bulbs to begin with. And then replacement of LED is a lot less as often as a regular condescent uh, bulb is. That's a great question. I'm going to ask Tom Funchen to come up because he he's in charge of the lights in the facility. So, yeah, we did. We had re we just uh, replaced the lights over at uh, Dorset Park, uh, and the cost between the, the standard lights that we have out now, the halogen lights and the uh, uh, LEDs, was extremely expensive at the time. Uh, we are doing some other lighting changes, LEDs around the city, but at, at right now the the cost would be double of what we put into the lights we got now as far as LEDs go. They have to meet a certain illumination right. because we are playing these sports fields. They just don't have that technology yet. The do they do have is extremely expensive. Okay. Um, have we looked at like what the cost is to run the, like the for electricity? Of yeah, the I, I broke it. We broke it down. Uh, the cost is probably about it's probably twenty percent less to operate on the LEDs, uh, but the, but the double the cost on putting the lights up. You have to add additional lights, and, uh, additional poles, gotcha. additional lighting. So th there was not a cost benefit there for doing it at the present time. Hopefully okay. in the near future it changes, but. All right, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Kichter. Thank you. <clears throat> and first I want to thank the um, Parks and Rec Board for volunteering for our community. Um, it's a fun board to sit on. It can be a little trying at times. Um, I remember when it first came together, you had that sunshine law thing. So sometimes it makes it a little challenging. <laughs> But um, thank you for, for volunteering. Um, I remember back when we started charging, Paul, you'll remember this, Mr. Smith remembers, we started charging for lighting at the fields, and we had a lot of pushback at that time from the leagues. And um, it was a really tough decision to make at the time. And, um, you know, they only make so much money. So, but, and I didn't know if that was the best uh, idea at the time, but that, that's what we had, you know. So, um, and I've, I've talked to Mr. Smith about this, that, you know, I just want to be assured that, you know, you, you all spoke with the, the leagues and, and they're all on board because, like I said, we got a lot of pushback last time. Um, so thank you for that. And I hope this works out for everybody because uh, we have some beautiful parks in this community and beautiful. Thank you, Tom. Where are you? There you are. We do. We have, I always hear great, you know, wonderful comments about um, our parks and, and fields and stuff, and they're in great shape. So I know it takes a lot of time, effort, and money on our part as well. But, um, and hopefully this can free up some, some more time because there is also concerns. I've heard concerns that some people can't get on the fields when they want to get on the fields. So maybe this might help that situation as well. So thank you all so much. Mayor Eddie. Uh, 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 Actually, another question. If that's all right, I don't mean to jump in front of Vice Mayor. Go ahead. Um, what about the high school where, like, the senior league and the junior league play for baseball? Is that, are they being charged for that also? I'm not really sure the relationship with the high school and the athletic fields. Is, can someone share that with me? No, there's no charge for those fields now. Okay. No. All right, and also I want to reiterate what Susan said. Thank you for serving on these boards because you are all very important to the city and your service. So thank you. Vice Mayor, you got a comment? Yes, thank you. Um, I as well want to thank all the members here. We don't get to, we, we don't get to see you all very often, but you 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 have an important role. I think I, I've always said when you look at when uh you know taxpayers look at what does my tax money go for, you know you think first responders, police, fire, and just under that is parks and recreation. That's crucial to any full service community. So what you all do that we might not see you as much as planning and zoning is very important. So I want to thank you all for that aspect. I want to thank you all for your contributions to these changes, and I, 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 I am in support of these uh, changes. Thank you. Thank you. I got a couple questions that I'd like to ask. Those leaks that we have are all residents in Tarpa Springs, so we have some that are not residents. The leaks are a mixture of residents and non-residents. Okay. What? Uh, we do have an obligation to provide uh, recreation to our residents, and that's part of the quality of life 
to the people, and that's one of the main responsibilities that we have. Uh, but we do not have the obligation to provide recreation to the non-residents. Um, I like to find a way where we can actually charge the non-residents more than we do our residents because our residents already pay uh, uh, for, from their property tax. And the expenses, the $170,000 that coming from is from the uh, property tax. Goes to the general fund and that's how we finance that. So I don't think it should be, the non-residents should be treated the same way as the residents. If we can find a mechanism to do that. But I, I, I believe that, and I agree with, with uh, proposed that we should be recovering some of the expenses that we already pay. And I want to congratulate um, everyone involved for maintaining the field so nice there. Beautiful. Thank you. We're now going to the uh, public comments on this item. Thank you, Peter Lex, 514 Ashland Avenue. Um, as mentioned, anytime you try to readjust fee structures or how to shift an economic burden, there is a lot of times pushback, but I think uh, you are on the right track as far as charging a, a user fee for field usage. And uh, the way the gentleman explained it, a quarter, an hour, <laughs> I don't know if maybe 250 is really enough, but you know, baby steps. Uh, being that some of the members of the board are here, uh, I'm not sure if it's been brought to your attention of late or how many of you members have been there on the board, but I would like at some point the rec board to be updated on whatever plans that I mentioned to you all before that are on the shelf about the sports complex and maybe they can start weighing in on it uh, as far as how we can change that landfill into a sports complex that has soccer fields and baseball fields and uh, as even Mark LaCourse when we talked about this years ago talked about tournaments that we could sponsor. Um, so Thank you for your contribution. I know it's a hard board to work on because it's what, y'all still at four o'clock on a Thursday or Wednesday or something. So I know it, you don't get sometimes the participation that you would that some of the other boards do get. The only last thing I would like to ask or mention in regards to saving money, especially with electricity, um, as some of you know, I live over uh, by Whitcomb Bayou and uh, I am a late owl. I go and check on my mom late at night, which means after 11, sometimes after midnight. And I hate having to call the police department when I see the lights on from Sisler Field or drive by uh, you know, the Rotary Park, going to Walgreens to pick up milk or something, and the lights are still on. So I don't know if we need to set up some kind of mechanism so I don't have to call the dispatcher who would then turns call somebody else to have somebody go out and shut the lights off. But if they're done about 9, 30, 10, and it's 12, 31, that's three hours of electricity burning and more heat generated, more money for Duke, and more effect on the climate. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you, Mr. Smith. You have anything else that you'd like to cut, share with us? Uh, no, I just wanted to mention um, that this item is on your consent agenda coming up here for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to look and see if there's any way that we can actually have uh, an addition charges for the non-residents, right? Then you can bring in that later at another time. Yes, Mayor, we will. I will add to that there is something to that effect already with the recreation activity cards. We, they're free to the residents, 
but the non-residents pay um, something like $55 per person and $75 per family. So there is an extra cost to non-residents already built into our recreation program. Yeah. Uh, going looking away. on your backup yeah. information that you provided to us, uh, there are a couple cities that are already doing that. Uh, one is the city of Largo in uh, St. John's County. Mm -hmm. So if we could ask them and see how they do it, that way we'll have to reinvent the wheel. Thank you very much. We are now going to the consent agenda, which is uh, item number five is the minutes. April, eight, April 18th is a regular session. May 2nd is a regular session. May 16th is a regular session. May 30th is a work session, joint meeting with the BOA. June 6th is a regular session. Number six is satisfaction and release of liens. Number seven is the attorney fees invoice 54183. Number eight is special events. A is Hippie Fest, August 12, 2017. Uh, number nine is approve the revised athletic fee, field feed structure, the one we just talked about. Number 10 is to approve the uh, combined CAD, RMS, crime scene, and fingerprinting agreement with Pinellas County Sheriff's Office for uh, the year of 2018. Number 11 is the award bid number 170104-B-JJ, Riverside Drive and Hillside Drive drainage and railway in improvements. Number 12 is increase file number 170002-N-RS radio and page in Motorola equipment and maintenance. Number 13 is the award file number 1701. 35-C-RS aluminum sulfate through Pinellas County, bit 167-0128-B-LN. Number 14 is the award file number 170136-C-CM, Southern Materials and Services, Co-op Pinellas County contract. Number 167-0120-B-RF. Number 15 is uh, approved increase bid number 140047-C-CM, air conditioning repairs and maintenance. Number 16 is a word file number 170137-C-RS, maintenance, repair, and operating supplies through the um, United States Committee, uh, communities, Purchasing Alliance, RFP number 16154. Number 17 is extend the file 170090-Z-RS laboratory testing services through the uh, city of Plant City. RFP 16-22U-O-SS. Number 18 is the award file number 170131. Athens Street Road Improvements, and number 19 is the award file number 170138, food and miscellaneous supplies. Any items that you'd like to pull? It's got a comment. Um, what, which number? Well, there's a couple of them that are having to do with like sidewalks and um, some other mitigation for flooding and some other aspects. Um, <clears throat> I think it would be helpful to have some additional information in the backup in the consent. I've reached out to some staff members and they've all been really helpful um, about getting me some information, but uh, like one page of just kind of a summary uh, to me isn't enough for some of these projects. So if uh, we could ask the city manager to um, just provide a little more backup data uh, about these, I think that would be helpful moving forward. Thank you. But it's good that you call in the staff to get more information for that. Great, thank you. <coughs> Are there any public comments on this item? Hear none. Chair, will you entertain a motion? Motion approved. Second. And roll call, please. <coughs> Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Nakikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzis? Yes. We are now going to the special consent agenda. Hey, Mayor. I'm sorry to interrupt, this might be out of place, but um, I know we've got uh, our recreation board here. It's the last item on the agenda. Uh, they're primarily the majority of our public that's here right now. Um, 
can would you entertain looking at item 27 sooner at all in the meeting? Uh, we can actually skip what we're doing and we go to that. It's just to uh, affirm the members. It's not yeah. really to make any selection. Okay, I just but know if it's been a question, we can do that. I just know it's been a long meeting so far, and sure, time, we can go I to item number two. available too, but affirm members of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for uh, 2017. Uh, this is something that we do every year. Uh, I need a motion for that. <coughs> a motion to affirm. Second. Any commission comment? Just uh, thank you all for everything you're doing. I know it's your volunteering time is uh, time is very valuable, obviously, and uh, thank you for your community service to the Department of Springs. Okay. Are there any public comments on this item? No. Again, thank you for your service. Roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me, I, I didn't get a. You sang it in? Oh, okay, good. Roll call, please. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahusis? Yes. Thank you. Now we're going back to item number 24, which is resolution 2017-25, budget resolution. No. Mayor, we're on a special 20. consent agenda, item number 20. Number 20. <coughs> Gee, we got messed up here. That's my fault, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> item number 20, increase, RFQ number uh, 160132-SJJ, City Engineer of Record. Mr. Cochin, Acting City Manager. Well, well thank you, Mayor. Um, oh, Paul, cover it real quick for you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. Uh, this item, we're requesting uh, authorization to increase the annual contract amount. This is for our City Engineers of Record. It's actually a shared contract between two firms. In our experience, we found that seems to work better for the city to share that engineer of record between the two firms so that we find that a certain one performs um, more efficiently at one type of work. The other, uh, we're able to use those as they best fit our needs. Uh, here, we're asking for an increase from 200000 to 500000 and, and mainly this is because we're getting a lot of work done. Um, this is actually a time when more money is a good thing. It's showing us moving through our projects in our capital improvement program and uh, making good progress. I see one example here we put in the memo is this upcoming Mears Boulevard project, which is quite sizable, and it's something that we uh, request this authorization so that we can keep going with that type of work. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I got a couple questions on that. Are, are these funded already scheduled, already budgeted? Yes, these are in the individual projects as part of the CIP, the individual department budgets. The other question that I have is being that we're increasing 150%, I wonder would have been better if we have a competitive bid. Paul, well, I, I can address that, Mayor. Okay. I work a lot with purchasing. When you're talking about specialized services like engineers, it's not a bidding process. It's a request for qualifications process. And back on 12 uh, 6 16, purchasing put you, gave you a memo, which is in the back, which in the back up, and basically outlined how they selected these engineering firms. They were the top one and two. And then once you, once you select, once you rank them, then you go and you discuss price. But it's, it's an RFQ process. It's in line with Florida statutes. So it, it's not a competitive bidding process. But everything was done according to purchasing standards in Florida statute to select these two firms, and we have a five-year contract with them. So that's how the process works. Okay. Thank you. Any commission comments? Here none. Any? No, uh, I've got some. Okay. Uh, can you explain to me a little bit? You mentioned that the budget is built into the projects themselves. How does that work? Um, yes, when we originally budget the projects, we'll have a construction cost estimate. And usually it's a percentage of that project cost, somewhere around 15 to 20 percent is an industry standard for the engineering fees. So we'll go ahead and include that total cost in our budgets for the project, both the design and the construction. Okay. Um, how many people are typically involved, like when we're going to an outsource situation like this? Um, like, do they use their whole staff to, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this because to me, spending an additional $250,000 on top of what we're spending already, just, or 
three hundred um, for a total of five hundred just seems like a lot of money that we could hire staff ourselves and do something in house um, moving forward. So I just want to. Paul, can I address that real quick, mm -hmm. um, Commissioner? If you in the backup, it explains um, we have a new projects development department. A lot of projects are really starting to heat up. If you look at the Mirrors project alone, it's going to be a lot of money to engineer and design that project that we won't have if we stay at the two hundred thousand limit. We're, we're going up to a ceiling. We're requesting, you know, basically $500,000 as a ceiling limit so we can complete these projects and have approval to complete them. So um, without a doubt, this $500,000 is there for a good reason. We have a lot of projects coming up that they are going to need to be done and designed by these engineering firms. So that's why you see the increase from the original $200,000. I believe, Paul, that Mirrors project alone is going to eat up close to $300,000, correct? Yeah, I'm not familiar with the details of that project, but I do know that that's one that's of correct, Jay. urgent yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's basically why this request is being made. The department has very good at, at projecting what projects are going to come up and coming back to the commission and requesting this kind of money. So, so I hope that helps you. Yeah, so I'm curious to see how many people are involved, these other um, companies still. But with the mirrors, is that like from the Mango Circle, Mango Circle to 19 portion? Because I thought the development that's coming in is actually going to be paying for the Mirrors project. Um, I don't know if anyone can speak on that tonight, but um, I'm just trying to figure out where the costs are. we just confirming their engineers are doing a good job on the design, or do we design this ourselves and then have them pay for part of the contract or part of the project? And then The engineers will do the designing. This is our best estimate on what this is all going to cost as we move forward, especially with that Mirrors project. I don't have Bob Robertson here tonight, but again, he was heavily involved in this. There's backup memos in it, yeah. um, and every expenditure will be, you know, budget allocated and spent appropriately. Thank you, Mr. Kunchen, uh I think it will be beneficial if we have Mr. Robinson to come here someday and give us an update on the projects to let us know where we're at. I could pass it on to the city yeah, manager. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. And this way, we, we can actually keep track of all the projects that are in progress. Right. And, you know, that, that department was newly created. Of course, he's, as you know, the spearhead on your Ancoat River Dredge project. Sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think city manager will have a problem with that at all, especially as he gets up and going and, you know, starts to identify projects to give this board periodic updates. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. He probably puts it on our <laughs> website, too. Any other comments? Any public comments on this item? Hear none. I'll entertain the motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? No. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahusser? Yes. Thank you. We're now going to the item number 21. It would be number 170100-B-JJ, Lake Tarpon Sanitary Sewer, expense page number three. Good evening, Paul Smith again. I'm getting a fair share of podium time yeah. tonight. Um, this, this is a, an exciting close to the highest priority area ranked in a study that goes back to the year 2001, I believe, and this is the Lake Tarpon area. And just by way of background, this area was selected because of the highest potential for improvement to the environment. It's a, it was a detailed look. I was actually the project manager on that study. And it looked at the types of soils, how close you were to the Lake Tarpon water body, how impaired that water body might be by the septic tanks in the area. And as a result, this area got the highest rating for us to go forward. That was quite a large area, and we've been working on that in multiple phases over the years, as you all know. Well, this is the final phase of this area one. And it's about a five block by three block <laughs> area. It's, it's sort of near 19 on the east side of it. And uh, once this is complete, we'll be able to move over to the second ranked area, which in this case is Seabreeze Drive, which we've already got in our budget for the design part of that work. So we're all looking forward to that. Moving along, um, this project, the good news is the contractor is someone we worked with successfully before, the low bidder, and uh, it came in some almost $300,000 less than the original estimate. That'll be very helpful to us as we move forward with the budget, provided that things go according to plan and we don't have any big additional expenses that we can't foresee at this point. Um, so staff recommends that uh, this be awarded to the contractor and uh, that we go ahead and get started with this project. Thank you. 
I remember when you did the study that uh, this area is very sensitive to the environment. Uh, this is a big project. Do we know, uh, do we have an estimated completion time? Yes, uh, our original estimates are sometime in April of 2018. So we're really uh, going to be moving along on this pretty quickly. Thank you. Uh, I think something that we'll be talking, we, we, we've talked in the past, that we need to uh, keep looking for a grant to provide financial assistance to the uh, residents to be able to hook up because it's very expensive for yeah. the people to be able to um, hook up to the, uh, to the network. We still looking? Yes, we are. I will say that um, this is probably widely known, but these types of improvements to these areas go directly towards the property values to the point that people do come to us and say, when are you going to come bring the sewer to us? So although it is a cost and it is something that um, we do have some options for people to finance at least a, the city part of the city portion of the cost, um, it, it is a net benefit to the homeowner as well. Yeah, I was looking for some help from the state or federal government to help mm -hmm. since we help in the environment. Yes, we're not able to locate anything like that at this point. Thank you. Any commission comments? I just want to say this is this is a long time coming, and I'm I'm glad we're we're moving forward with it because I know uh, I've been talking about it, and Mayor's been talking about it since at least 2008. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm happy to see that we're moving forward. And I think, the, what is the cost, about 3000 or so dollars to the, each um, resident? Well, yeah, the city portion of the cost is around 2000 and then you've got the private contractor doing the plumbing and abandoning the septic tank. And I, I'd be afraid to hazard a guest on that, but we do see that often neighborhoods are successful getting a, um, a contractor to do uh, sort of a group pricing because they're already in the area. It's something that we kind of stay arm's length from because we don't want to get in as a recommender of something that we don't control, but it does seem to work well. Okay. So I, I think the result is the costs are as low as they can be. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I'm happy to see this moving forward. Thank you. Any other comments? I've got a couple of questions. Call? So does it require everyone to hook up then? Obviously, I would think that would be the case. Yes, there's a state statute actually that requires it, and it's 365 days from the notice of completion. So okay. we've been uh, proactive in getting out in the neighborhood and letting people know about it even before we're coming to you tonight because we want them to know we're designing this, give them plenty of time to start thinking about it, and then they'll get a notice when, when it's complete so they'll have that year to make arrangements to connect. Gotcha. Um, I reached out to um, Mr. Robertson about the water piping, uh, actual drinking water in the area <laughs> and the... Those pipes were installed back in 79, 83, and 89. So they do have some age on them, and I asked, is it possible for that to be involved if you're tearing up any roads or if you're tearing up any areas to also look at those also? Um, and you mentioned since the, it is well below the budget that there could be a possibility of looking at updating those pipes in the area because I know the infrastructure in our pipes uh, throughout the town does have some age on it, and if we're tearing up areas, it, it makes sense to to use resources um, along, uh, alongside each other uh, so we're not double paying maybe, I don't know, five or six years down the road when we do have to replace the pipes. So that sounds like it is an option. But thank you for uh, your group uh, and the work you guys are working on with this because uh, how environmental sensitive Tarpon Springs is with the lake, with the river, with the bayous, and with the Gulf of Mexico um, all, all surrounding us. So uh, thanks again for bringing this forward. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Any public comments on this item? You hear none? I need a motion. Uh, Mr. Proof. Roll call, please. Second. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Luzes? Yes. We now go to the item number 22, authorize execution of a uh, local agreement with Pinellas County to extend pending for Pinellas, local infrastructure sales surtax. Um, I'll defer to the city attorney. Uh, what you have is an interlocal agreement that is executed between the municipalities within the county and the county um, as a means to disseminate the penny for Pinellas dollars should that be approved on November's ballot by the electorate. And if you have any specific questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. 
This is a identical agreement that we had the last time. Yeah, it hasn't changed it except hasn't changed for at all. yeah. The the uh, obviously it's going to be updated for um, the next ten years, um, and again it does still have to be approved um, on at the election November seventh. Thank you. Paid for Panelis is a very important pro uh, program for us. We because of that we were have been been able to do many projects, and if it's approved we're going to be doing a lot more projects. So. Uh, can you, uh, Mr. Concha, would you please tell us how we're going to inform the, the residents so they know the importance of this program? Well, thank you, Mayor. We, we've already been informing the residents, and not only us, the county and other cities. As most people know, the vote is November 7th of 2017. But on our website, uh, for anyone that's watching tonight, we have a whole segment on Penny for Pinellas with all kinds of link to um, the county's website, um, they have a penny website, all kinds of different information and presentations that were done. And I think in the future, um, we would need to obviously um, utilize, I know I talked to Mark about it, uh, putting out informational flyers in our water bill when that time is right. Um, we could also look at social media, Facebook, putting materials, again, informational sure. materials at City Hall, the library, and other locations throughout the city. So um, without a doubt, it needs to be uh, advertised and the information needs to get out to our residents. All right, thank you. And every time I do have a town hall meetings, I always explain the, uh, the program, right. how beneficial that is. Thank you. Are there any commission comments on this side? You're none. Are there any public comments? I will entertain the motion. Motion approved. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Panther? Yes. Mayor Lujuzis? Yes. Thank you. We now go to the item number 23, authorized revision of uh, personnel rules. Mr. Jell, are you going to handle that? Um, I, can, I can handle that. You are? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as you can see in the backup, we had a, a committee that worked um, pretty extensively with our labor attorney to look at some of our rules um, and get them up to date, um, you know, with, with the times and with, you know, applicable federal, state, and local law. Um, these updates apply to Rule 1, which is prohibitation of discrimination, Rule 4, applications, exams, eligibility lists, Rule 7, conflict of interest, Rule 11 deals with leaves, Rule 13, harassment um, and discrimination, and Rule 18, discipline. Um, we all agree um, with these updates um, to the policies, especially um, when you're dealing with Rule 18 um, with discipline. Some of those, some of those um, sections were outdated and now they're up to date. Um, another thing we looked at too, um, if approved by you tonight, um, being an accredited police department, um, we go through this every year with our policies and procedures. And we also have a electronic computerized system called Power DMS where all of our policies are posted on there. Any kind of training that we do with it, the officers have to go in there, they have to sign off on it, and we are gonna implement that over here at City Hall. I'm gonna have my accreditation manager work with our HR director to have that um, system put over here so we can get all the policies out to our people, do training, everything will be electronic sign off. So it's a great way just to keep people up to date on the policies and you know, keep that culture strong with, with our policies and rules. So um, we're asking for your approval of these policies. Everything has been um, put out pretty well in advance because um, you know, there are a lot of changes, but so that the commissioners can see them and ask any questions before this meeting. So yeah. if there are any additional questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Right. That was one of the uh, questions that I had, uh, how we're going to form the employees, and you already answered yep. that. Yes, uh, the only recommendation that I have is when they do the monthly safety meetings, if just tell them that we now have new rules, though the news have been, the rules have been updated, and uh, they will be available to them on a computer system or as a hard copy? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways with, with the Power DMS system we will implement. It's gonna, you know, there's a whole training module that goes up, we'll put that out to everyone and everyone's gonna have to sign off on it. And it'll, it'll become a way of doing things, but it's a great system and I look forward to getting it up and running over here. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Any commission comments? I've had plenty of questions, but I've got them all clarified before the meeting, so. Okay, thank you. Any public comments? I need a motion for that. Motion approved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alhuzis? Yes, thank you. Okay. 
We are now going to the item number 24, which is resolution 2017-25, budget resolution 2017. Resolution 2017-25, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the budget for fiscal year 2016-2017, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners, oh, by title only. Thank you. Any public comments? Any commission comments? Need a motion? Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Item number 25 is the ordinance 2017-20 application 17-43 a rezoning amendment for uh, Ms. Galusas for 620 Bayshore Drive from R100 to uh, 100A. This is the second reading. It's quasi-judicial. The city attorney will read the title and it will explain the quasi-judicial process. This is Ordinance 2017-20, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, for approximately 0 0.8 acres of real property located at 620 Bayshore Drive, uh, application 17-43, from R100 to R100A, providing for findings and provide, providing for an effective date. As this is the second reading, I will just swear anyone who is wishing to speak and ask that you just provide any updated information. All those wishing to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So sworn. There is no additional information on this application. The applicant apologizes that she had to leave. <clears throat> That's, it. That's it. Are there any commission comments? I'll entertain the motion. Motion approved. Second. Roll call, please. This was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on April 28th. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Resolution 2017-23, Tarpon Plaza Partial Reply. Resolution number 2017-23, a resolution of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, approving the final subdivision plat application 17-49, Tarpon Plaza, partial replat, accepting all offers of dedication as described in said plat, authorizing the appropriate city officials to certify approval thereon and providing for an effective date. And with that, um, I can answer any questions that you might have. This is a very simple replat. It's creating two lots out of a single lot that is the former Office Depot site for uh, the Burger King property. So um, with that, I can answer any questions that you may have. Any commission comments? Questions? Any public comments? Roll call, please. Motion. <laughs> uh, motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes. Well, item 27 has been completed. So that concludes the agenda tonight. And we go to staff comments. Major Young, and thank you for being here tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Any comments? No comments. City Attorney? No Yellow. comments. Just thank you for having me. Thank you. Chief Cochin. <laughs> I couldn't see him <laughs> multiple, I have multiple <coughs> piles around here, but Jeff, um, it's nice sitting down on that end, and you know, but um, nope, I have no comments, Mayor. Thank you, and um, thank you. Have a good night, Madam City Clerk. No comments. Nothing. Hmm. Commissioner Kikta. Um, the only thing I think our next meeting isn't until July. Is that correct? Yes. So we've moved our after the Fourth of July. The Fourth. Well, you know, but I mean a regular July 11th, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I wish everybody a very happy and safe 4th of July. Okay. And uh, I want to thank, um, I had a flag day ceremony at the Elks Lodge, and I want to thank um, all of everybody here that attended. Um, appreciate you all being there. It was nice that you showed up. <laughs> but um, thank you again. Thank you. Vice Mayor Panther. No comment. Commission. Uh, welcome back, Vice Mayor. It's good to have you back you. with us. Uh, also, I just want to reiterate uh, all the volunteers that volunteer on our city boards and advisory boards. Uh, they're a very important part of our city. 
Uh, so thanks again for everything that they do and also to the city staff members uh, that help so much to get these meetings together. I know there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to uh, just get this going um, twice a month. So also want to wish everyone safe travels this summer uh, and a safe, happy 4th of July. Thank you. I have uh, several comments to make. Um, just to remind everyone that July 4th, we have the picnic at the Great Park. It begins at 10 a.m. and it's free to everyone. We also have the fireworks, and that begins, what, 8 p.m.? I believe so, yes. All right. Uh, Thursday, July 6th, we have the Sunset Beach concert. That begins at 7 p.m. Friday, July 7th is the first Friday at 6 p.m. Month is already going, guys. Um, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Uh, Williams. She's the new president of St. Petersburg College, and we're looking forward to work with her, as we did in the past when she was the provost here in uh, Harper Springs campus. i uh, also like to congratulate former Congressman Michael Billy Rikers on having a street named after him in Kalimnos. Oh, nice. They have a street now. It's called Michael Billy Rikers. Uh, also, I am very happy to announce and report to you that the Senior Information Center will begin operation October 1st. Um, the uh, center will be located in the library at the small conference room. It will be operating three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The operation will be run by volunteers, as we, as we discussed that in the past. The uh, library staff will provide assistance to the volunteers. Uh, but the Senior Information Center volunteers will be under the Police Department, Crime Prevention Division, supervised by Officer John Ulrich. And he also have many contacts from um, his crime duties, watch. Crime Watch, and so he can notify the people. So I think it's appropriate. And I'd like to thank all of you for your support to the seniors. Well, that concludes the regular session meeting tonight, and it's adjourned at 8. 38. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night.